Oh, yeah. I didn't like it. All right, okay. Just that. What we're going to look at now is the effects on the body. So, what alcohol can actually do to you? Anybody know? Liver damage. Liver damage. We mentioned that. The yeah. Any any others? Kidney failure. Kidney failure. Does it affect your brain as well? Affect your brain. Yeah. If you recognise this person, let me know. <laughs> if you recognise them, let me know, please do. Very well, I was thinking. We talked about the liver and, and the kidneys. What I'm, gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from there all the way down and I'm going to explain what alcohol can do to you. Right, it can affect your brain. So what can it do to your brain? Kill the brain cells. Brain cells, kill brain cells, yeah. Does it make your brain shrink? Well, it kills brain cells, so yeah. potentially your brain's going to shrink. Okay, I'll, I'm just going to simplistically say how, how it does that, yeah. Inside your brain, you've got millions and millions of brain cells, yeah. And the way that the brain works is that somewhere in your brain, a little electric charge starts off, goes down there. Anybody know what this gap's called? Synaptic gap, yeah. Goes down there, goes down there, down there. So for my finger to do that, <coughs> inside my brain, somewhere in my brain, a little electric charge has started off, gone through all of these nerve endings and what have you, and then eventually got to the ones attached to my muscles and my finger, and it's making me do that. Yeah. Let's just draw that little. Can you remember what the numbers were? Uh, 14. For women? 14, 21. 21. Um, 35. 35 for women, 40, 55, 55. and this one, 90. And just before we, we sort of carry on, I forgot to say before, uh, these are weekly allowances. However, what's, what happened certainly just after I started in the alcohol field, we were working on weekly allowances, but people were saying, you know, I only ever drink 14 units a week, or I only ever drink 21 units a week. However, I do it all at the weekend, and that's for binge drinking. Mm -hmm. So what, what the government, what the medical people said, let's change it from a weekly allowance to a daily allowance. And they said, for a woman, it's okay to drink two to three units per day. For a man, three to four units per day is considered safe. So if you were to change the top ones by seven, seven days, you're going to get 21 and 28. So you should think that that should then be 21 and 28. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a big thing in the, the papers saying the government has now increased the amount that we can drink, so let's go out and drink 21 and 28. However, what the, the papers didn't say is that you should have at least two days without any alcohol allowing your body to recover. And if you take two days worth off there, you're going to come back down to 21 yeah, and 14. Okay. Right. Anybody who drinks above recommended level limits can do this. Yeah. If you're drinking alcohol, what happens to your reaction time? It slows, it slows down. It slows down. The reason it slows down is because alcohol puts a little barrier between the brain cells. It makes it a little bit harder for this to get across. It can still do it because you haven't sort of blocked it off, but it gets a little bit harder and therefore you slow down. If you sober up, you'll remove the barrier, and this will just work normally, so you, your reaction time will come back to normal. However, once you start drinking above this level here, what can happen, and obviously the higher, higher up you go, the more likely it's going to happen, is you can put permanent barriers between the brain cells, which stops this electric charge getting across. For your brain to work, this has to be working all the time to stay alive. So if you stop this one getting across, you're going to kill that brain cell, that brain cell, and all the other brain cells are going to die off. So lots and lots of brain cells are going to die off. Anybody heard of senile dementia? Mm -hmm. yeah. Senile dementia is basically getting older and your brain cells are dying off. So you lose your memory and stuff like that. Senile dementia generally happens to people 
and later life. So when they're 70, 80, 90, the, the older you are, the more likely you're going to get symptoms of senile dementia. However, there is a disease called Wernicke's disease, which really has the same symptoms of senile dementia, but brought on by alcohol misuse. Yeah. When I first started in this field work, I used to think you could only get Wernicke's disease if you were drinking well above this limit here. I went to a conference many, many years ago now, I suppose. A doctor stood up and he was talking about Wernicke's disease. And he said hey, he had two patients at that time who, two female patients who were just 18, had been drinking just over 14 units a week for about three months. Had the first signs of Wernicke's disease. Uh, it isn't something that if you're drinking lots and lots and lots you're going to get. You may be susceptible to it and get it just at low levels. The good news is, certainly if you're young enough, if you stop drinking, what will happen is your brain will find another route round and it will take that path. Yeah, I'm sure you've, you've heard of stroke victims who have lost the, the function one side and things and, and the ability to talk. If you can get physiotherapy and speech therapy very, very quickly, and the drugs that they have nowadays, then you can regain a lot of your functions back, if not more. That's the good news. Okay, if you're killing off lots and lots of brain cells, then the chances of serious psychiatric disorders are increased. One of the most common ones with people drinking up here is alcohol-induced schizophrenia. So people will hear voices. And it's real to them. I have many, many clients who have said that they hear voices and stuff. Again, if you to stop drinking or greatly reduce your drinking, then the schizophrenia will go away because it's alcohol induced. That's your brain. Eyes. Anybody had double vision? Somebody mentioned before that double vision. Bloodshot blood eyes, puffy blood eyes. Yeah. Sign, sign of heavy drinking. Also, the combination of nicotine and alcohol can actually cause you to go blind. We don't know why, or I don't know why, but there is a combination of you of them two could cause you to go blind. And double vision. Just a little joke. I used to do this sort of presentation to young offenders. Did it for many, many years. Many, many years. And I used to talk about, look, the young kids sitting there, I used to say, look, please, if you've got double vision, never pick a fight with anybody because there's two of them and only one of you. <laughs> and I literally did this for years. And then one young person suddenly said, but you've got four fists. <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> nose, drinker's nose. Have you seen it? Big, big, red, bulbous noses. Yeah. The, the reason it happens is because alcohol bursts the capillaries at the end of your nose and it makes it balloon up. So that's a sign of long-term heavy drinkers. Potted face, a sign of long-term heavy drinking. It's all to do with malnutrition and stuff like that. Just get pots in your face. Get around looking at people in the bar. Oh, don't <laughs> really have to do it. Okay. Also, people tend to look a lot older if you're a long term heavy drinker, especially women. And the worst case I had of that was a, a, a woman came into our office when I was working for the agency. Um, she sat down and we had to fill loads of paperwork in, obviously. And one of the questions is, how old are you? I had, I had actually written 60. Something six, because I thought this woman's in her 60s. She was 38. All right. Generally, I don't have any reaction when I'm working with clients, because obviously I hear lots of horrendous things, but I think my jaw went, ah, <laughs> yeah, and she was 38. There's no, yeah, she was definitely 38, but she looked in her 60s. It's the worst case I've ever seen. Just pure, through purely, I think, heavy drinking. Okay, cancer of the mouth can be caused by drinking alcohol and just a little you know, mouth cancer, especially in the young, is on the increase in this country. Mainly because of binge drinking, I think. I like the drink culture of the young people. So you can get cancer of the mouth. Cancer of the tube down to your stomach. Cancer, sorry, cancer of the throat, cancer of the tube down to your stomach. 